everyone. I'm Rochelle Chernowski. This is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, May 7th. On today's show, we hear from Pavilion Concierges, auxiliary volunteers who can do just about anything. We'll also travel to the top floor of Lakewood from the outside, right along with firefighters as they test a new ladder truck right here at Shell Point. But first, today we're taking a trip to Patagonia, a dazzling, diverse area of South America as photographed by Gerald Langberg of Sundial. He went on a National Geographic expedition there and captured some amazing images of the wildlife and surroundings, as well as the people. Be sure to attend his photo presentation, Patagonia, happening today at 1 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. If you're feeling adventurous and want to visit our own nature preserve, well, here's your chance. Our Shell Point Golf Club is currently closed to golfers as crews are excavating all 18 greens and rebuilding them from scratch. It's a fascinating process, one you can see firsthand at the Shell Point Golf Club open house, happening this Thursday at 1 p.m. You can see the renovations and learn how the golf course operates. Again, this free event happens Thursday afternoon, and if you need transportation, sign up for the court pickup beginning at 1 p.m. Tomorrow, we've got an unusual event happening at the Crystal Room. Wednesday night is their normal pasta night buffet, but this Wednesday night will be a little more hands-on. Sal Zumbo is an employee at the Island Cafe, who trained at a culinary school in Italy. Tomorrow night, he'll be making his own pasta. That's right, he'll demonstrate how pasta is made by hand, and then you can try his handiwork by choosing your pasta and all your favorite toppings. This pasta-making demonstration happens tomorrow night from 4 to 7 p.m. in the Crystal Room on the island. For our next segment, we'd like to warn those of you with a fear of heights. Maybe you should switch away for the next five minutes or so. But for those of you with a sense of adventure, hop on board to see what it's like to be a firefighter rescuing people from seven stories up. The Iona McGregor Fire District recently obtained a new 70-foot tall ladder truck with all its new features, they needed some tall buildings to train their firefighters how to use it. And Shell Point was more than happy to oblige. What we have going on here today is um, uh, from a training with the Iona Fire District. And uh, what I think is interesting to know about uh, the Iona that a lot of our residents and our staff do not know is we have a very close work working relationship with the Iona Fire Department. Um, everybody's used to seeing them coming and going when they're responding to emergencies with uh, sirens blasting, etc. But what they don't know is that I own the fire department in some shape or form is on property usually two to three times every week. Uh, due to code enforcement, uh, they help us with any kind of construction and building code questions they have. But all our fire safety equipment, um, all our sprinklers, uh, we have to make sure we have enough uh, water pressure for our sprinkler systems and hydrants. Um, all our alerts, all our uh, fire detectors and alarms, these are constantly in, uh, inspected by uh, Iona with the help of Iona Fire Department. When we're coming around and they're the ones that are telling us where we can or cannot use grills, for instance instance, or where uh, or why we can have storage in the parking areas. They're our partner in making sure that we're in compliance, but also bringing some safety uh, issues, new safety issues to our attention. And this is one of the things that uh, we do in exchange is uh, they have a brand new truck. Uh, behind us, you'll see it's a 70 foot ladder truck that's brand new to the district. And they wanted to come out just to see what its capabilities are. Hi, I'm Lori McMahon. I'm the Public Education and Information Resource Officer for Iona McGregor Fire District. This is our new Sudfin Tower. It's a 70-foot truck, truck that can go 102 feet in the air, and we're really happy to have it on as one of our, our brand new apparatus. So we, had, we had a Grumman that was in 1985, and it was far past its expectancy of, you know, we had great mechanics that kept it going for a really long time, but it was time to make sure that we had the proper equipment so we could do the high rise, you know, evacuations and rescues that we needed. It's about an even replacement. It's a little bit of a smaller truck. And although it has the same ladder and bucket, it has a little bit, a little bit more bells and whistles on it, but not that many. But it's a smaller, actually the size of the truck is smaller, which allows us to maneuver into tighter places. As you can see, coming through the parking lot, through Shell Point, there's a lot of tight spots to be able to get into, to be able to get to the buildings, and it's, this will allow us to be able to do that a lot better. The truck you see behind us is our brand new 2012, the Sutphin. 
a platform truck, a 70 foot of ladder with a platform on the end, 500 gallon water tank, 1500 gallon minute pump. It's located at our station on Pine Ridge Road. It's central in the district, able to respond anywhere. It actually would be the second piece of apparatus that would be responding at the shell point if there was a call out here, a fire call anyway. Uh, why we're out here today, why we're out here this week doing our training, we're doing three consecutive days. The reason why it's done that way is the way we work, the way we get everybody who's not working out here, and why it's so important to make sure everybody's trained on the truck, because you never know what station you're going to be at, what, what function you're going to be assigned to perform if it is on the, on the fire ground or on a task. And the opportunity that's afforded to us to come out to Shell Point and to be able to do these kind of training activities, it's, it's, it's invaluable. And why, is, why it's so important is you're out here actually training on the actual buildings that you have the potential to respond to. It shows everybody where to park, what you need, things to look at, obstructions and obstacles that are in the way. So it lets you kind of already have an idea in your head. So if the, thing, the need ever arises to use it, you already have that plan formulated in your head. So coming out to the woodlands, going out to the mid-rises and getting those perspectives, not only setting up but actually visualizing where you are and what you're doing, but to be able to actually drive and actually see where the best places to park are. Utilizing the spots where there would be cars in there, so it's real life, there's really gonna be cars here. And I gotta say, you guys are really nice out here, very accommodating and can't ask for anything more. It's a great opportunity to be able to have live buildings to come and train at and for us to have a, a great relationship with Shell Point and the residents to not uh, mind us coming and being able to train here and so the guys can get a, a little preview of what it would be like to be when they come in here so they'll be prepared and they'll know exactly what to do and our, our response will be much more effective and we really appreciate the ability to be able to come in and do this. This gives us a measure of uh, confidence that uh, they can respond, they'll know what the correct piece of equipment to bring and uh, what building uh, they can go to and what stories can go to. So whenever we can and we do often cooperate with Iona Fire District uh, in regard to that kind of uh, training. And then this all comes together with actual response uh, during an actual emergency. So again, we're really blessed and we really feel happy to have this very close work relationship with the Iona Fire Dis District so they can conduct this very, uh, very, very important training. You've got to be ready for anything when you're a firefighter. And the same is true when you're a volunteer for our Pavilion Auxiliary. You may be called upon to visit someone or to assist during activities or to be there for a dining event. These do-it-all volunteers are called concierges and Terry Kolath recently visited some of them to learn more. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath. I am on the third floor of the Larson Pavilion and I'm speaking with Allison Brown, nurse manager. We're talking about a brand new volunteer program with the Pavilion Auxiliary. Thank you for joining me, Allison. Oh, thanks, Terry. Thanks for having me here today. It's so nice when we're talking about a new program to first talk about what it is going to mean to our friends and neighbors who live on this third floor. What do you think is going to be um, special about this program for you and your staff and your residents? Well, first of all, we find it very exciting that the volunteers are starting this program, the concierge program, on the third floor. It is going to add quality of life to our residents on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. The volunteers give a gift every single day. They're here caring, not only for our residents and families, but for our staff as well. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. It is, and I can only imagine when the elevator opens and people walk out in a blue jacket with a smile on their face, what that must mean for all of you. We're ready for them. <laughs> ready for Come them. on down. <laughs> we want our volunteers. We want them here every day. Well, as we are starting to talk about what this program involves, and of course we're looking for volunteers, mm -hmm. I just think it makes people feel good to know from the manager in mm -hmm. charge that it really is going to make a difference for her residents. So It makes a difference, and I think the important thing is, for this unit particularly, it's about building relationships, not only with our residents, families, but with our staff as well. And so, thank you. And who could do it better than a fellow resident? That's right. That's right. Now I'm with Bobby Brown, former president of the Auxiliary here in the Larson Pavilion and current member of the concierge program on this floor. Bobby. 
tell us a little bit about this place where you're doing the concierge program? Well, first of all, I would like to say that this is the forever home for many of our friends and neighbors of Shell Point. This is where they live. This is their home. Thank you for pointing that it out is to home. us, Bobby. It's so as you come into people's homes on a regular right. basis to spend two hours, tell us a little bit about some of the things our uh, volunteers were recruiting will have the opportunity to do here in this home. Everything we execute in the way of a task is an opportunity for us to visit, which is wonderful. So if you're transporting residents, we do a lot of transport. Mm -hmm. We transport residents to the beauty salon. We transport them to the medical center. We transport them to the dentist. We transport them to daily activities and to the dining facility. So transport is a very big part of this job. Well, every time you're transporting someone, you can get into a conversation. That conversation leads to building a relationship. And then you're a friend in their home saying, let's go, it's time for the exactly. salon, and the relationship grows. Now, there's a lot of other things that we do too, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of things we want to do. Right. We assist residents with getting settled in their new home. They're downsizing into a small pit place that becomes their home, and they need help in getting settled. We also help with menus and meals. Uh, we do table setting for meals every day. Every day the linens are changed between meals mm -hmm. in, the, in the dining facilities up here, and we change those linens um, after every single meal. We go for walks, we offer companionship, we share stories. Oh my goodness, the stories we can share are wonderful. Now Bobby, you have served for a good long time in this building, in this blue jacket. What keeps you motivated to keep giving the way you do? I'm curious. First of all, I love the residents who reside in this building. I truly love them. And it doesn't seem to matter to me where I serve because they're all important. But I have found a real reward in this floor. Um, I find it to be this family atmosphere that I just dearly love. And the fact that I can build relationships with people over time, that they will look forward to our visits and look forward to the things that we do with them. Um, I cannot tell you how meaningful that is. And that's what has me on this floor. And I plan to stay here. <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> now with Jerry Nanfelt, the president of our auxiliary, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, why and how we're starting this brand new opportunity for volunteers. Thank you for having me, Terry. It's a, it's a wonderful new uh, volunteer opportunity that we're offering our uh, residents at Shell Point to join us in on the third floor of the pavilion. Um, and we are so excited about it. It has been developing over the last about six weeks. Bobby Brown has been helping me with getting this program started. And so now we're ready to encourage others to come and help us. Mm -hmm. Every task that we will do on the third floor with our residents that live there will be um, building relationships and friendships with them. Mm -hmm. And so that is what the program's gonna be all about. And that'll and happen because you'll re regularly be with these residents. Exactly, two hour commitment a week uh -huh. will bring us to this floor mm -hmm. and we will get to know everybody because um, the residents on this floor don't move around as much or move out and in as mm -hmm. much and we get to know them and we really build wonderful relationships with them. How many people can we really take to get this started? We know you and Bobby are starting it. How many more do you need so we can say okay we're ready to go? We would like to have 10 energetic volunteers like you and Bobby. come <laughs> forth right now. Uh -huh. We um, and they would make a commitment for one day a week for two hours. Right now the program will be Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning. And so if they call me right away, Terry, they get to choose their That's day. Right. First come, first serve. First, yeah. And so we will fill in those days and that is, that is what uh, 
Allison, our nurse manager on the floor, feels is the most important time for mm -hmm. us to serve. There's more activity going on, more areas in which we can help at that time. This is not just a program that will benefit the residents. It's a program that benefits the volunteers. And we are so excited and pumped up every week when we serve here for two hours. The residents do so much for us. And I just think about it if you live out there somewhere in one of the courts and call me and come to help us. I just want to say that you are doing this and saying this from experience. Starting the first floor concierge program for rehab, the memory care unit concierge program, and moving forward into the third floor, I know that you would not be doing all of this if it didn't fill your heart and you're offering somebody the same kind of opportunity you have. Right, and you know the first and second floors have been so successful. We have 25 concierges on each of those floors now, given 20 hours a week to the pavilion, and uh, to the residents in the pavilion. Mm -hmm. And if you add those two floors, that's 40 hours a week. Sure. It, has, it has been such a wonderful addition to this, to, um, given volunteer help in the pavilion. So it is a wonderful thing. Be a part of it. Don't lose out. Come, join us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that you've listened carefully as Jerry spoke from her heart about the heartbeat of this new program and the opportunity it gives you to do something meaningful with two hours of your week. Something meaningful for the residents who live here, something meaningful for you, and something meaningful for this building which is the skilled nursing facility for all of us. Coming up, it's time for Resort Services to tell us what's happening this Tuesday. Then after your Academy News and Menus, stay tuned for Village Church Connections. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, I'm here with Suzanne Zavada, and we're gonna go over what's happening here at Shell Point today. We're gonna start bright and early with a Health Connections class at 715. It's Bend, Breathe, and Balance down in the Health Club. Then we move to 8 o'clock down to the golf course. The Ladies Golf Association will be playing. Also at 8 o'clock, we have the round robin men's doubles tennis down at the tennis courts. 8.15 is the time for the stamp ministry. They'll be in the stamp room on the island. At 8.30, bocce will be played at the bocce court across from the Woodlands Commons. At 9.15, the Caregiver Support Group Therapy and Memory Care Group will be meeting on the second floor of the Rehab Center. Sign up is required for that. And then at 9.15, we have open painting down in the art studio in the tunnel. 9.15 is also the time for the shuffleboard game down on the shuffleboard courts. Then we move to 9.30 where match play mixed doubles tennis will be played down at the tennis courts. 10.15. Through the Bible, Bible study group will be gathering at the Osprey Room. Then at 10.30, the Caregiver Support Group Therapy and Memory Care Group will be at the second floor of the Rehab Center. That concludes the morning. Here's Suzanne with the afternoon lineup. Thanks, Bev. We'll start the afternoon off at 12.30 with Mixed Progressive Bridge in the Game Room at the Woodlands. At 1.15, the Knitters Group will be meeting in the Osprey Room on the island. The Rollicking Recorderist will be in the Tarpon Room, and the Women's Prayer Group will be meeting in the Hospitality Room of the Village Church. At 1.30, the Stamp Ministry will be in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. And at 2.45, we have a Health Connections, Balance and Mobility Training Level 2 in the Health Club on the Island, and this is closed. That'll be followed at 4.30 by another Health Connections, Tai Chi Cha in the Health Club on the Island, and it's also closed. At 6.45, the hymn sing will be in the Resident Activity Center on the island. That wraps up our day. We hope you have a great one, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Terry Coleth, and it's a big day in the Academy on Tuesday, May 7th. At 9 o'clock, beginning pottery begins in the pottery studio on the island for those who have signed up. At 9.15, you can take a course understanding your computer in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. At 9.30, Advanced Memoirs on the Computer takes place in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. And at 10 o'clock, the History of Ancient Egypt Session 4 will take place in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands, and sign-up is required. 
at 10 o'clock smartphones, Apple iPhones will begin in the Sable Room and sign up is required. At 1 o'clock, Coffee with the Neighbor, Patagonia. In the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands, a ticket is required. Don't forget to write your name on the ticket because we'll have a drawing for a free academy class. I'd like to tell you what's new tomorrow. Apple iPad got one. Now what? For those who have signed up. And the Computer College Prep School on Laptops by Richard Nelson of Lakewood. Sign up is required. I'd like to take just a moment to talk with you about our Pavilion Auxiliary. We do have multiple volunteer opportunities. First, because it's summertime and some of our auxiliary volunteers are traveling, but we've made the commitment to keep those committees going for our friends and neighbors who live in the Larson Pavilion. So please take a moment to look at the back page of the, week, of the weekly reminder, the auxiliary update, to find out how you can get started with the auxiliary. We also have specific positions available ongoing in our Resident Relations Committee with our Beverage Card, our Dining Committee, and our Flower Committee. And we're beginning a new concierge program on our third floor at the Larson Pavilion. Many opportunities. Please give me a call. Menus for Tuesday. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter is Chicken a la King over rice with green beans. The dinner special is build your own stir fry for eleven ninety five, and the soup is loaded potato. In the Island Cafe for lunch, enjoy a Western bacon cheeseburger with onion rings for six ninety five. The dinner special is baked chicken with mashed potatoes and mixed vegetables for seven ninety five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Tuesday are skirt steak for fifteen ninety five or stuffed pork for thirteen ninety five. All menus are available twenty four hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods at the Village Church. It's my privilege to conduct the Village Church Choir. And as we sing together and share weekly in our worship services, often we're singing gospel songs. We sing some of the hymn texts that express the theology of our faith. And as well, we enjoy the opportunity to take the settings of Scripture and sing them from our hearts. Last year, we were privileged to have Craig Courtney with us. He's a gifted composer, arranger the editor of Beckenhorst Press. But as a writer, he has taken many of the scriptures and composed anthems expressing those biblical truths. One of the texts that we really enjoy singing is the text that comes from Isaiah chapter 43 that says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. He titles the anthem, Be Not Afraid. It was our privilege to sing this anthem recently, as we shared in the worship service Sunday morning, the anthem entitled Be Not Afraid, and we were especially happy to have with us Valerie Knupp from Morgantown, West Virginia. She's a delightful lady and has a beautiful soprano voice, but for her heart to join with our hearts as a choir to sing this text is a great encouragement. As you listen to this text today, maybe you want to take your Bible and look at Isaiah chapter 43. Follow along verses 1 through 4 as the choir sings, Be Not Afraid. I trust that this will be a great encouragement to you, not just the beauty of the music, but the truth of God's Word. It's a joy for us to sing and to share this truth together, and I pray that it will be a blessing to you this day.
We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we meet the salon's new massage therapist, Robert Bissett. We'll also learn how to make a fabulous fruit-filled dessert, blueberry pear crisp. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Tuesday, May 7th. I'm Rochelle Chernowski. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow.